Um, I have seen um, Scooby Toilet 67 Part 1, but you know what? I haven't seen Scooby Toilet 67 Part 1 analysis. So, first it's ISO Toilet, then it's LA Cameraman, and then it's the WR. Okay. Everyone, we have finally seen the new 67th episode of Skibidi Toilet, and now it's time to analyze it. Defouque decided to break it into two parts, which means it will be just as cool as the 57th episode. Today we're going to talk about the return of the Skibidi Mafia Toilet, the new Skibidi Scientist upgrade, and most importantly, the Titans. It looks like they're alive. But who was trying to confuse the agents last episode and for what purpose? We'll try to get to the bottom of this and look at all the theories. I think it's the food boom. For sure. Get your tea and snacks ready. Okay. Watch until the end. You're definitely going to enjoy it. Let's go. The episode begins with riding along with the other agents through the base of the Skibidi toilets. It's not... Also, guys, I will leave uh, this... I will leave this video in the description so you can go to the descriptions and watch. Also, I see something green. If you also see something green, if you don't, then here it is. If you see it now, it's probably the food boom. Okay, let's keep watching. The same place from the last episode, but it's very similar. I think the Skibidi toilet base is huge, and these are just a few of the entrances to it. Notice these huge square toilets right here. Not... They are used as towers or fortifications, I think. Most likely... I didn't notice. And we all noticed the Skibidi cop toilet. Base is underground and looks like a lot of mountain tunnels and mines connected to each other. Everything around it is on fire and littered with toilets and destroyed agents. Apparently, there were battles here, too. The Alliance has been trying to take the base from several sides. We see Dafouk teleporting to one of the buildings in the distance, which means something interesting is about to happen here. By the way, who do you think the POV cameraman is this time? He has two rocket launchers in his hands, and he's the same height as this big cameraman. This guy is also has a hypno gun, rocket launcher shells, and a jetpack behind his back. I think the POV agent has something similar. That destroyed helicopter was probably one of these. By the way, the same camera is used here as the spy toilet from episode 16. Two skibbity guards with machine guns try to attack our jeep, but they fail. I think the only thing more useless than a skibbity helicopter in this show is machine guns. We saw how the Alliance stopped making camera spiders. We saw how in last episode, the gray speaker man got a series of machine gun balls up close and didn't get a scratch on him. It's weird that these guys are still using it. The POV destroys them with a two-handed shot and we move on. There are agents lying here with spears sticking out of them. And we remember who fires these things. Apparently, Skibidi Cop was already here and helped fight back. Maybe our guys in the Jeep are some kind of cleanup squad or why they were sent here, I don't know. By the way, here we see another similarly overturned Jeep. It seems that the Alliance has some new vehicles. And here's that Skibidi Cop we were talking about. He immediately shoots two spears at the driver and our Jeep loses control. Also, the cop manages to wound our fellow because of which he misses with one of rocket launchers and loses the second one. By the way, note that this time the big cameraman is completely robotic. POV cameraman pulls out two reloaded rocket launchers and wounds the policeman, so he decides to retreat. First of all, I didn't realize when he had time to load the rocket launchers or he did it without looking at them. Secondly, Skibidi Cop has one spear left. Why was he scared and didn't shoot the POV with it? Okay, our guys jump off the jeep and see Dafouk again, but in a different location. I Seems notice. like he'll be more interested in seeing what's going on from here. We'll talk about which side he's on a little bit later, so watch the video. I didn't notice. Go to the end, and Skibidi the Cop apparently decided not to retreat, but to sneak up behind us. Fortunately, our partner was attentive and threw a rocket right in his face. By the way, this cameraman is dressed unusually and pretty stylish. And then there's smoke, as if someone teleported in and an arm with a built-in acid cannon comes out of it. Apparently, the Skibidi found the agent's weak spot and decided to add as much acid to their weapons as possible. But here we could see that Skibidi Mobster was already here. 
Perhaps he was pretending to teleport, and the smoke is fake. The big cameraman melts down just like it was in episode 55. By the way, the explosion was caused by acid hitting the loaded rocket and the cameraman falling on it. Remember, he had a hypno gun behind his back. I don't understand why he didn't use it on the mafia guy or the cop. It sure would have been a lot more effective than a rocket. The POV fires two rockets at the imposter, but it hits right in the armored plate in the front. Well, it turns out that it's Skibidi's mafia toilet. Yes, that's the same mafia guy from episode 28. I laughed at him during the review because he looked weak and useless. He was also destroyed in the funniest way possible, by Titan Speakerman's smacky slap. But apparently he's been rebuilt. His face doesn't look as fresh as it used to. But he's gotten a lot of upgrades. Now the mobster has mechanical legs like Skibidi Scientist, a mechanical arm with a circular saw, and most importantly, acid cannon. But apparently the main bully is also back and ready to make his cheeks red again. Mafia guy dodges the toilet flying into his face and looks up in fear. And oh my god, the Titans are alive! We see Speakerman flying in Skibidi airplane. He seems to be feeding him with something, maybe with a knife. And here we see the Titan cameraman. He's alive too! This circular saw Skibidi wanted to sneaky attack the Titan but didn't do any damage at all. Instead, he gave cameraman his robotic arm as a replacement. And of course, he got his own medicine. Skibidi mobster flew up behind Titan at this time, cut off the remaining camera on his shoulder, and doused him with acid a little bit. October, tele DVP. Shower right, right there. Titan don't give a damn about that. Skibidi mobster flew up behind Titan at this time, cut off the remaining camera on his shoulder, and doused him with acid a little bit. I guess after that acid shower right So I showed you a little bit. Okay, let's continue. There, Titan don't give a damn about that little barrel. He's already dead inside and ready to fight till the end. I think the Titans realized who this guy is and decided to destroy him with the old-fashioned way of smacking him in the face. And it was really funny when Titan Speakerman gave him another powerful smacky slap and sent him to sleep. The cameraman gave him a nod like, thank you. Apparently, he's badly hurt from the previous episodes, and it's hard for him to fight. By the way, let's see what kind of damage the Titans took. Speakerman's cannon was broken. We saw it torn off at the end of episode 65. He was also apparently hit by shrapnel from those skibidi kamikazes. Here they are still sticking out of him. This one is very close to the core. I think Titan got lucky. A little more, and it could have hit his core and badly damaged the Speakerman. Well, what about Titan Cameraman? His main camera is broken. I think it's hard for him to navigate through a cracked lens. Also, the additional cameras on his shoulders are also destroyed. His core defenses are broken, and there are sparks around it. That's what I'm worried about. We remember that before Titan was attacked, he spent a lot of his energy on the G-Man clone. He's also missing an arm and the new shield that was attached to it. But now he has the mechanical saw arm from the Skibidi toilet. He also has one long wing broken off, so I guess he can't fly now. And the jetpack could be damaged. We don't see it. We see a lot of shrapnel hitting cameraman from that battle, too. There's smoke right at the entrance of the base, and Skibidi Scientist teleports in. Except there's one difference. His eye looks changed. It's red now. What if it's a clone, too? POV cameraman also has a jetpack. He used it to get up high to see the battle. By the way, we will see the continuation, because this is only the first part of episode. But Skibidi the Scientist worries me a lot. First of all, we've seen that regular Skibidi toilets have eyes that can turn red when they're enraged. Maybe the Scientist did something to boost himself before the fight. But what if it's not a real Scientist? The Titans already spent all their energy fighting a fake G-Man. I think if it's not a real Scientist, the Titans might even be destroyed. Actually, I had a theory that Skibidi Scientist didn't really enlarge himself. He just created a big and strong puppet, like with the G-Man clone. I don't think such a smart character would risk his life in these battles. I also think we will see other G-Man clones in the second part of this episode. Remember when the scientist and his squad left G-Man the Imposter to fight the Titans at the airport? I guess they didn't finish off the Titans there because the improved G-Man clones and a real G-Man toilet are already being prepared at the base. They obviously lured the Titans to their base to destroy them there. Once the Titans are destroyed, the Skibidi will be able to infect them and repair them as their own warriors. That said, remember how last episode we saw a green message from Dafuk? I assumed that he could have lured the special agents into a trap back then. 
but it could have been the other option. Look at that word right there. I thought it meant dead, but what if it's alive? Maybe Dafuk knew that Skibidi scientist would want to misinform the agents and send them a fake photo. Dafuk may have tried to stop him and intercept that signal, but he failed. In general, there are different options. I recommend you to watch this video to better understand who Dafuk may be in this series. Also, Titan TV Man is almost ready. I think he will appear in episode 68, but we may see hints of his appearance at the end of the second part of episode 67. Who knows? I also think someone will be heroically destroyed in the upcoming battle. No way around it. It could even be Titan Cameraman. I also suggest you watch this video about G-Man if you haven't seen it. Here I show you why all the improved G-Men are different clones. It would be cool to see all the clones together in one of the episodes. By the way, my Instagram followers find out the secrets before the video is released on YouTube. Also join my Discord server. Watch these videos. There are also a lot of interesting things. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and put a like. Write in the comments what I missed in this episode analysis. And that was me. So now it's like... Now it's not the video. No. Elite Cameraman. Also, let's do this. Uh, so when I make like a two-part video, the first part will be on Friday, but it will be like 2024 or 2023 de December. Okay. So what the part will be like? Friday, then the other part it will be at, um, other Friday, yeah, now it's Elite Cameraman, yes, he has a new video, he, he made, Okay, so we don't have to watch this because we already seen. But let's see this. Who he has too. <laughs> you know what? Let's just. <sighs> Tomorrow we will see this video. Now let's watch this too. This will be the longest video ever. This will be like a uh, stream, I think. Okay, let's get into it. Hello, everyone. Elite Cameraman here. After a whole week of waiting, episode 67, part one was released, and it really had a cliffhanger and a half. This episode really served as a great build-up to the next, and as you guys know, this episode is not actually finished, and it's already almost two minutes long. If you remember episode 57, it was two parts, and episode 67, which is exactly ten episodes after episode 57, might also be two, or maybe more parts. If the series actually continue, we might get to see episode 77 also be multiple parts. If Dafuk wants to continue on the tradition, this episode might not seem big when you just watch it, but in the grand scheme of things, it was a great episode and a build-up to what's to come. We saw the Titan duo come back, and as I guessed on my video about the leaks, Titan TV Man was nowhere to be seen, and it seems like the huge battle is beginning. Wait, 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 wait. That might not be true. I mean, we will probably see the Titan TV Man next epi next part. Well, he has a Titus. Let's just watch the video. In the next part or episode, because the description of this episode is, It's time. Yesterday, after the episode 67 leak was discovered on the merch store, people thought episode 67 would come out later today. But hours ago, Dafuk Boom sent this image to his Discord's Skibidi Spoilers section and said, 40 minutes. If we go back, he also said 40 minutes for episode 66 as well when it was about to come out. So I'm guessing that from now on, we'll be getting a 40 minute to one hour heads up before episodes are released. Because before this, instead of Dafuk himself, the old owners of the Discord used to reveal that it was coming out about one hour before it was released. 
The last two episodes both came out at similar times, and I'm not going to lie, after I saw the leak, I thought it would come out later today as well. So I went to sleep, and that's why I'm posting this analysis a little late than usual. I guess it's time to adjust my sleep schedule. And before we get into the actual analysis, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe because we just reached 800,000 subscribers and we are on our way to 1 million subscribers. I also know that it's very possible to reach this goal because if we look at the statistics, literally 77% of you are not subscribed to the channel, so you guys better subscribe. On a serious note, thanks to everyone who has been supporting the channel, hopefully you guys are actually enjoying the analysis videos. Anyways... Here we go. To me, today's episode revealed a lot of stuff about what's going on and what might happen, but it left more questions instead of answering my... Hmm. Guys, yeah, should I start a Discord? I mean... Like, we can, like, start, like, a Discord. Also, wait, that's good if I join Discord, because I can't see the leaks. I don't have to, like, look at a leak, cameraman's ISO toilet, that the be yours, uh, 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 when they show, like, the leaks. I can't just look, and I want to be a member. Let's keep watching. Questions because we didn't get to see what happened between episodes 65 and 67. There were actually some differences in Scientist Toilet. And if he is the real Scientist Toilet, it looks like he has been through a fight. And with this, we also saw Secret Agent twice while watching the scene again. And I'm hoping that we'll get to understand everything that happened in between because episode 66 and episode 67 part 1 probably had a decent time skip between them. One question that was answered was the tablet that the cameraman had in episode 66, which showed the Titans being dead, and thankfully it turned out to be fake. Anyways, this episode starts with us on a vehicle going through the base that was destroyed in the last episode, and it looks like we are watching from a large cameraman POV instead of a normal cameraman POV. This gets more clear later in the video, but either way we would be looking at this devastating scene because my guess is that the toilets caused a havoc after the special agents left the scene on episode 66 and the squad POV cameraman is going with might actually be the rescue squad. We start the scene by seeing the whole place in flames, and if you look carefully there are both dead cameraman, speaker man, and toilets, which means that a fight 100% happened here and the whole place is burning in flames. And while this is happening, we see something strange. If you look behind, you can clearly see a green glow flash for a second with someone next to it. Uh -huh. We all know at this point that this is the secret agent. It didn't seem like he actually interfered today, but this doesn't mean that he won't. Because every episode, he has been interfering more and more. Also, don't forget that this was just part one of this episode, which means that he probably is still there and might interfere and appear in the next part as well. This episode... Okay, I'm it's back. just part one. My dad had a call from my mom. She wants to know how his leg is. You know, he broke his ankle. His leg, you know. Okay, let's keep watching. It was almost two minutes long, which means the full episode 67 is probably going to be the longest episode ever in the series, surpassing three minutes. After the scene with Secret Agent, the POV cameraman looks to his right, and we see two cameramen trying to run away, and this was the main thing that confused me about this episode. While everyone else is dead, how are they alive? How did they actually survive this place? Unless they are troops that came after like the POV cameraman, I feel like it's very unlikely. Did I so see him? ...to survive an event like this because seconds later we'll see the true nature of what happened here. But before that we see two new machine gun toilets attacking us which we kill by launching two rockets at them. If you pause the scene right here, you can clearly see one speaker man and one large cameraman who has been killed on the right side. But if you look carefully, they literally have been stabbed with huge metals sticking them to the ground. What a cruel way to kill someone. This also means that it wasn't simply just a normal toilet who killed these Alliance troops, because a normal toilet could not have done this, and we actually know who did it. If we roll back to the beginning of episode 65, you'll see the upgraded police toilet and how he kills people. 
These dead troops on the ground actually foreshadow what's to come because seconds later, we get the return of the upgraded police toilet from episode 65. He appears out of nowhere and starts shooting the vehicle, and if you pause at the right second, you can see that he actually hits the driver cameraman twice. After the car stops, the police toilet also shoots the large cameraman next to us right when he is about to shoot. But it seems like that was his last bullet because if we pause the scene when he sees that the POV cameraman also has rockets, we can see his shocked face being goofy. Kids, don't go into a fight ever, but if you do, make sure to analyze your opponents first. Otherwise, you'll end up like the upgrade police toilet. Right after this, we see the POV cameraman shoot his rockets at him, causing the police toilet to almost crash. But it seems like his defenses are very strong because he was able to actually escape and survive two rockets. Normally, toilets on his scale die pretty quickly, but it seems like their armors have improved quite a lot after the return of the scientist toilet. After the police toilet leaves, we get a decent look at the place we are at. But if you were subscribed and watched my last video, you already knew about this place because I covered it when the episode 67 leaks got out, and it actually gave us a better look compared to what we see in the video because it was shown outside of the cameraman POV. Even from the first glance, you can see the... Wait a second, those toilets look like TV men. I'm going to prove it to you. So there is our um, TV man. Like it literally looks like a TV man sits uh, I draw black. Yeah. Toilet statues that we saw in episode 66 and that this mountain most likely has a secret base inside and it's probably very huge. There are many speculations going around about what's inside and my theory is that it's probably the laboratory for the toilets and G-Man toilet might actually be inside here waiting for scientist toilet to get him outside with his upgrades. But I'll get to why I think it's a big lab inside later in the video. After police toilet leaves the area, the large cameraman also get out of the car because the driver is dead. But something really weird happens right here because the POV cameraman suddenly looks to his right and we see the secret agent standing on the smoke. But it really seemed like the POV cameraman either felt something watching him in this scene. We don't know what the secret agent is planning, but we know that he has been teleporting left and right the last two episodes. And it seems like this will continue. In episode 66, he literally orchestrated a whole scene by showing a photoshopped image to the cameraman, resulting in them becoming berserk and actually being able to escape with the TV man thanks to the support of the special agents and especially thanks to my beloved TV woman. Not gonna lie, after episode 66, I thought we'd get to see TV woman again, which I was really hyped for, but I guess I'm not getting the treatment I wanted on my episode 65 analysis anytime soon. Also, before we continue, I realized something about the second scene with the secret agent. I really don't know if it's anything important the second he shows up, if you look in the opposite direction, at the secret bunker's door. You can see the password or the entrance mechanism actually flash for a second, which looks like it actually has been tampered with. Maybe the secret agent actually tempered with this device to allow the Alliance to easily enter, because both these happen at the same time, and unless it's a rendering mistake, it actually would make sense, and it's such a small detail that if it's actually real, I would be really surprised that I noticed it. Also, if it's true, we now know that the secret agent is clearly planning something about, and I think we'll get to see it more on the next part. Seconds later, we see the police toilet trying to sneak up to the large cameraman, but he gets shot with rockets. And if you freeze the frame right before, you can see that the rockets that were shot at him before broke his armor and removed one of his weapons. But these don't matter because he literally gets obliterated after getting shot. As I said before, don't be like this police toilet. After the police toilet gets killed, we get a zoom in on the large cameraman who shot him. And we can see that he still has the metal spear on his chest. And even though everything, this Sigma cameraman gives us a thumbs up. Actual Jigga Chad behavior, like the video to show your respects to this Chad. Like being, I wish you could have survived what's about to come. But before we continue... We also get to see the bunker a lot more clearly thanks to this zoom in. And the weird thing on the left is 100% some type of mechanism that opens and closes the bunker door. And it probably has some security measures that the secret agent might have disabled. 
It also says lockdown on the bunker door, but that might just be something that came with the asset. But there is something else that piqued my interest, and it's the logo on top of it. If you look really carefully, you can see a DNA logo on top of the lockdown text. And remember what I said about this place being a toilet laboratory. To me, this was the first giveaway. And it might actually be true because we get to see some insane stuff literally a second later in the video. Suddenly we see the black teleportation smoke and a mechanic hand with toxic capabilities come out of it and shoot acid onto the Chad cameraman literally meddling him. And once it hits the rocket launcher, he explodes. Thanks for your service, large cameraman. We'll never forget you. Mm. I know that plot armor doesn't work on regular troops, but I wish he survived. Anyways, right after the POV cameraman shoots his rockets inside the black smoke, but it doesn't look like it worked at all because this crazy toilet comes out of the black smoke as if nothing happened. This new upgraded toilet looks like Mafia Toilet from episode 28 because of the hat, but we don't know if they are the same. But one thing is for sure, this toilet has been upgraded to the brim and he has no chill. He has the strider legs, he has his jetpacks, and he has the classic buzz saw that most toilets have. But the main thing is, he has a hand cannon which shoots acid. And if you guys are actively watching the series, you would know that acid is getting more and more popular among toilets. And it seems like the Alliance will need to take more defensive measures against it because for now, only the Titan cameraman could defend himself against his with his shield, but now he won't be able to as well, because if you rewatch episode 64, you'll see that his plasma shield was definitely attached to his right arm, which doesn't exist anymore. And right when the Mafia toilet was about to shoot the acid onto the POV cameraman, something literally throws a toilet at him, leaving him shocked, and we see that it's the Titan duo arriving at the scene, showing us that they aren't dead, and the Imagine on episode 66 was totally fake. We first see the Titan speaker man on top of a plane toilet trying to kill him, and Titan cameraman walking very heavily without his right arm in place, and he seems very angry because even though he is at a disadvantage because of his arm, when the quadruple buzzsaw toilet arrives at the scene, he literally takes one of the buzzsaws and simply sticks it to his arm and starts using it as his new arm. Bro literally stole an arm from a toilet, you know it's about to go down when Titan cameraman is this mad and this is just the beginning. After getting his new hand, he simply demolishes the quadruple saw toilet, but right after the Mafia toilet sneak attacks him from the behind. Even though he was already damaged and we could see electricity coming out from his shoulders and core before, he takes on this damage pretty well and literally slaps the shit out of the Mafia toilet with the slap sound effect, which reminded me of what happened in episode 28. And we also see Titan Speakerman slap the Mafia with full might seconds later, which was so goofy. But before that, right after Titan Cameraman slaps the Mafia toilet, Titan Speakerman shoots the acid hand of the Mafia toilet, causing it to explode the acid on his own face. And we can clearly see that his skin is burned down. But that's not the important thing, because you do know that acid literally melts the Alliance troops. But if you look carefully, nothing really happened to Mafia Toilet's tools. And they are all fine, even though the acid touched them. This means that the toilets have a material that is protective against the acid. And I think after the Alliance invades the Skibidi Toilets bunker, they'll probably steal the recipe for this material as well. And you already know that the Mafia toilet gets slapped by Titan Speaker Man right after this scene. Titan Speaker Man doesn't even look back after slapping him and just carries on. But the way the Titan duo looks at each other, it's giving me some sus vibes thanks to the troll leaks. God damn the way they look at each other. I wish TV woman looked at me like that. Right after this scene, we see a huge black smoke. That? And you could have guessed... I like Hammerman is like, same cameraman. Bro, Ellie Cameraman, if you're watching this, please name your. Please. Wait. Imagine Ellie Cameraman change his name to Sim Cameraman. That would be funny. Who was about to come even before seeing the reveal? The POV cameraman gets back a little with his jetpack, and we see the arrival of the scientist toilet. But there is something clearly different about him, because if you look at his right eye, it's now red, and there is a black scratch on it, which makes him look demonic. We still don't know when the red eyes come and go for other toilets and what they exactly mean, but one thing we know is, whenever there is a toilet with red eyes, they usually act a little more crazy. 
and scientist Toilet's laugh in this episode was a lot more terrifying compared to his normal laugh. Right after the camera pans to the right, and I didn't realize this before, but if you look carefully at Titan Speaker Man, he has stuff that stabbed him on his chest, arm, and leg. It's a lot more clear in the scene before where the Titans look at each other. But it's crazy that Titan Speakerman can still fight without getting any treatments. This also means that after what happened in episode 65, they didn't stop by to get any help or treatment and simply just rushed to the fight because they know that the Alliance needed them. Their sacrifices will never be forgotten, and I feel like one of the Titans might actually die in the next part because the scientist toilet doesn't look like he'll have any mercy. And at the end of the episode, we see the Titan cameraman saying, you are dead, to scientist toilet and start spinning his buzzsaw. This episode was actually crazy, and hopefully the next part is even more crazier. I really can't wait for the return of Titan TV Man. If you enjoyed the video, go subscribe, Elite Cameraman okay, out. Okay, let's see this video. Fuck! Ever I since Rockstar... Yes, look! Hubby! We got Hello, everyone. Elite Cameraman mm. here. After yesterday, a lot of new theories about episode 67 started coming out, and there are actually two... So the last one is... That the beyond major topics that we need to go through because I didn't really mention them in my episode 67 analysis. As you guys know, we saw a fake G-Man in episode 65 and it turned out that he has been an imposter for a while. With this reveal, many people started theorizing that the scientist toilet in episode 67 part 1 is an imposter as well. The reasoning for this is the change that happened to his right eye. I really don't think that's true, but I'll get to that later in the video. Other than the scientist toilet topic, we also have the theory that the mountain bunker that we see in episode 67 part 1 is actually the TV man base because of something we saw in episode 66. Other than this, Da Fook decided to upload the episode 67 part 1 short as just one short instead of cutting into multiple pieces. He decided to cut most of the episode and the short starts with the Sigma large cameraman dying because of the acid. He also put the text, it got serious now, in the description. With this being said, there might be a couple reasons why he decided to just cut most of it and upload it as one short. The first one is the title because he is going to be titling the next release, episode 67 part 2. He may have wanted to keep it clean and not post a short called episode 67 part 2 to confuse people. Other reason is that episode 67 part 2 might already be in the works, and we might get the video a lot sooner than we expect. But we'll talk about all this in the video, so before we get into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe. We are literally zooming to 1 million subscribers thanks to all of you. Anyways, here we go. The first theory that many people are talking about is the scientist toilet being fake. Yes, we can clearly see that his right eye and his demeanor has changed compared to before, but that doesn't mean that he is an imposter. I need to agree that this sudden change is kind of weird because we know that not much time has passed, but to know what exactly is going on, we need to go back and analyze the behavior of other toilets that have gotten red eyes. The main trait they have is the fact that they seem a lot more aggressive compared to normal eyed toilets, and I think we'll get to see this in part two of episode 67, which I don't think is going to end well for the Titans. With how the story is going, I really do believe that there is a possibility that one of the Titans die. I don't know if Dafuk wants to kill off a character because it's not something that should be taken lightly, but the impact of a Titan's death would be so huge, and it would also enhance the importance of Titan TV Man's return, which... In episode 67, the impact of a Titan's death would be so huge, and it would also enhance the importance of Titan TV Man's return, which everyone thought we were going to get in episode 67. We still might get it, but I don't think we'll get Titan TV Man in episode 67 part 2, but instead either in episode 68 or in episode 67 part 3, if Dafuk decides to make a three or four part video because part one was already three minutes long, and I feel like Dafuk might want to try and get to eight or ten minutes for the whole episode. I don't know how the release dates will be, but hopefully we can get at least one episode every seven days. Now let's get to why Scientist Toilet is not fake. And let's try to understand why some toilets get red eyes after some point. Because that's the main question. Why is this happening? I think it actually has been a very long time ever since the last time we saw a toilet with red eyes. But the first thing that comes to my mind is episode 51, where we witnessed the POV of Titan Cameraman. 
One of the giant toilets that the Titan cameraman fought in episode 51 actually had red eyes, and it was a lot more harder to kill him. He also, for some reason, acted possessed, and even with Titan cameraman going all out, he was able to survive pretty well. Titan cameraman even used his core flames to burn the red-eyed toilet into ashes, but somehow it actually survived until Titan cameraman flushed him for good. We don't know if this was something special to this toilet, but the red eyes seemed to give more power and defense. Scientist toilet was already very terrifying looking, but in episode 67, part one, he certainly looked more sinister compared to normal. And he actually also has a scar on his eye now, which kind of makes him look more demonic for some reason. What if the red eyes have a deeper meaning than we know, or maybe it's some type of new power drug that the toilets have been trying to produce? There are a ton of possibilities when you look at it, and if I'm honest, I really don't think that we are getting an answer anytime soon. But I feel like the scientist toilet didn't mean to get the red eyes because he normally seemed like a character who actually plans ahead and keeps his chill. But we have seen that the red eyes make you do the opposite. And the scar on his eye might indicate that a fight happened, and that was the reason why he got the red eyes. But the question is, who did he fight with? Because from what we've seen, episodes 65 to 67 doesn't really have much time between them, even though the scientist toilet literally showed up on all of them teleporting each time. So did the scientist toilet fight with someone between episodes 66 and 67? Maybe it's actually the astro toilets. We haven't seen astro toilets in a long time, and unless they were actually fake actors who were ordered to make a scene to deceive the Alliance, it might actually be them who are causing these red eyes. If you look back at episode 60, the astro toilets cornered the fake G-Man toilet, and the weird toilet that holds G-Man toilet's head actually had red accents on his blade. Maybe they weren't actually trying to kill him, but get him possessed with this weird blade. This might really be a huge reach, but why would this blade have red parts? Because if we check almost any weapon from the series that the toilets use, they don't have any additional colors ever. Maybe between episodes 66 and 67, Scientist Toilet got in a fight with the Astro Toilets and actually lost the battle, causing them to stab Scientist Toilet in the eye to turn his eyes red. If this is the case, I think we'll probably get some proof of it in the next couple episodes, but I might just be yapping. Now let's get to the next theory that's going around. We all watched episode 67 part 1, and this mountain clearly looks like the toilet's base with the toilet statues being on top, and also with episode 66 where we saw the toilets guarding the place. I don't think this theory is correct, but there is still a chance that it is true. If you have watched my episode 67 part 1 analysis, you'd know that we saw the bunker door from a close-up POV, and it said lockdown and has the DNA logo on top of it, this same bunker door is also used in the TV man base in episode 66, and we can see it for a short second when we are looking at the special agents, but the real question is, if this is the same place. Because if it is, we've been misled, and I really don't know what will happen in later episodes, but personally don't think that it's the same place. I already knew that this was an asset from one of the Half-Life games, but most of you guys mentioned that it was exactly from Black Mesa, and that it was used in the laboratory, which still means that we might see a laboratory inside the mountain, but Defouk might just be using this asset just because unless it's actually the same place. I'm doubting myself a little because inside of the TV man base is as big as the mountain itself. I guess we'll see what's going on soon. What do you think? Do you think it's the TV man base instead of the toilet base? If you enjoyed the analysis video, make sure to like and subscribe. Elite Cameraman out. So now it's that day, yo. How do I pronounce? Okay, let's find that day, yo. Okay. Even though, why did she pick that name? <gasps> Glad. Friends, I was still able to get my main channel back. And I also want to thank you all for supporting my new channel. Also, thanks to Moby and Elite Cameraman for their support. All new videos will be released on this big channel. Why not? I but I will also it. develop a small channel. My sister also wants to do YouTube. And on the new channel, there will be yes, videos sister. about Skibidi Multiverse and Skibidi Toilet. So be sure to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss cool videos.
And as everyone already knows, today the long-awaited 67th episode was released. More precisely, the first part of the 67th episode. And in this video, we will find out absolutely all the secrets of this episode. And there will also be incredible theories. And in this video, you will find out, is Skibidi Scientist real or a fake? And why did he decide to fight the Titans? What kind of place is this and what is stored there? What is Daffuk Boom doing here? Who saved the Titans? When will Titan TV Man appear? And what will happen in the next, part? next part? And today I will try to answer all the questions. And you will be shocked by what you hear. So be sure to watch the video to the end so as not to miss anything. And I also want to ask you to subscribe to my channel for those who have not yet subscribed, since 80% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel. Mm. And I would really like to dial 500,000 subscribers for the new year. And it's not difficult for you to subscribe, but it's very nice for me. Hello friends, you're on the <laughs> channel. Subscribe to the channel and press the like button under the video to speed up the release of the next video. And let's go. At the beginning of the episode, we see a car with cameramen. An ordinary cameraman is driving. There is also a POV cameraman and a large cameraman on board. And in the building on the left, we notice some kind of computer. I don't mm -hmm. know what it is yet, but if anyone knows, write in the comments. We also see fire, the bodies of agents, and toilets everywhere. And this means that the battle took place here not long ago. And this is the same location that was in episode 66, just from the other side. We also see the familiar green light and Dafuk boom, which then disappeared somewhere. We also see escaping agents. And on the destroyed ship of the cameramen, we can see the inscription security, which means that this is a special ship for battles. The same as it was in episode 66. But suddenly the toilets attack the agents and now they can shoot, not just hit with their heads. And we see how our POV cameraman takes out his cool guns and destroys the weaklings. Ooh. We can also notice the inscription is clear, but if we add NU, it turns out to be nuclear, which means that this is a mini nuclear weapon. This is also confirmed by the nuclear icon. And there's glider launcher. We can also notice the inscription is clear, but if we add NU, it turns out to be nuclear, which means that this is a mini nuclear weapon. This is also confirmed by the nuclear icon. Inscription A for So guys, um, that video um, stopped, stopped recording by itself. That means I have to edit it. I don't want to edit. Also, at the end, at the end of the video, I have to tell you something, okay, guys? Lighter launcher Gam 4B, and this is also a large POV cameraman, which, by the way, is the first in history. And this confirms that he can hold heavy guns. And this is the same Rambo that was in episode 66 and I'm very glad that he survived. Anyway, after the destruction of the toilets, the cameramen continued on their way. But suddenly, a Skibidi policeman appeared and immediately killed the driver and also wounded the large cameraman. I also noticed that the policeman could have killed the POV cameraman since he had one more shell, but for strange reasons, he did not do this, just like in episode 65. But our cameraman decided to kill the policeman and treated him to a juicy nuclear shell, but the policeman managed to escape. We also see that the large cameraman now has jetpacks. We also see strange doors. And if you look closely, there is a DNA symbol, which means that this is a laboratory. And I will really surprise you when I tell you about it. But we will talk about this towards the end of the video. For now, remember all the information that I'm going to tell you. A large cameraman noticed a policeman behind the POV cameraman and successfully destroyed him. And I think that it was another policeman because this policeman has no shells. And there was one shell at this policeman and they probably have their own squad, as it was in the initial episodes. Anyway, after the destruction of the policeman, a large cameraman liked this video, and you also shouldn't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. But suddenly we hear the sound of a teleport. And we see a huge cannon filled with acid, and it destroys the poor cameraman. And in this frame, we can notice that he is bleeding. And I have already said many times that some agents are cyborgs, and we have already seen many times that blood is flowing from them. Perhaps the remaining people wanted to help the agents, and the agents turned them into cyborgs. And this is not a bad theory, but also write what you think about it. Then the POV cameraman tried to destroy this mutant, but unfortunately he failed. And we see that this is our old friend from a nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. In fact, this is the Skibidi Mafia, who got slapped and roasted by the speaker man in episode 28. But overall, he is fine. And I am sure that no one was expecting him in this episode. Perhaps some old characters will also appear in the future. 
Who knows? Really? And the mafia has already tried to kill a POV cameraman. But someone started throwing toilets at him, and you can see from his face that he is surprised. And we already see how the speakerman carries out stabbing procedures with a knife on his patient. We also see that cameraman is also here. But how could they survive? Two, two. But let's take it in order. Cameraman is ready to fight again. Although he is not in his best shape, but he is ready. But some loser immediately attacked him. And this is the same mutant who was in episode 65. Only now does he have a protective mask. And a very interesting fact is that this mutant is wearing a mask, which means that the Skibidi scientist already knows about the TV man, and the mutants thought that they would fight with the TV man. And this means that he will definitely appear in two or three parts of episode 67. And yes, you heard it right. I said part three. For some reason, I think that the episode will be divided into three parts. Of course, I can't say 100% that this will happen, but everything is possible. Or part two will last two or three minutes. Anyway, cameraman showed his mongoose reaction. And he decided that he needed a new hand and borrowed it from the mutant and immediately tested it on him. But the Skibidi Mafia decided to stand up for his friend, as toilets usually do. He attacked from the back, managed to cut off the last camera of the Titan, and also added a little acid to the neck. But for strange reasons, the cameraman didn't feel the acid on his neck. Previously, even a drop of acid could destroy anything. But I don't want the cameraman to die and I'll miss this moment. And cameraman slaps the mutant. And so the speaker man shoots into a barrel of acid and the mafia takes a warm bath. And after that, he tries to escape but immediately receives another slap in the face and explodes. I even felt sorry for him. He became the record holder for slaps. Anyway, now the most important moment has come. We hear the sound of a teleport, and we see how the Skibidi scientist personally decided to take an autograph from our Titans. But he became a little crazy. He now has a red eye, and he also has some kind of scar under his eye. Also, his toilet has become more black. Although before it was dark gray. Perhaps he is doping, because he began to smile when he saw our Titans. But in general, he is different from the scientist who was in episode 65. And we can assume that this is a fake, just like Gmail toilet from episode 65. Gmail. But not everything is so clear. She said Gmail? What the heck? I don't think that after DeFook showed us copies of Gmail toilet, he will immediately start making copies of all the toilets. Again, I don't think so. And also, the copy should be as similar as possible to the original. But this scientist is different from the one we saw before. But I think that this is the original. And perhaps he fought with the Titans after episode 65, and they were able to leave him scars. And he is now very angry and has changed. But I also have a crazy theory. What if this scientist is one of the Astro Toilets? And in this body, I understand that this sounds very unbelievable, but think about it. The last time we- Here is my cat. Wait, guys, I have a surprise for you. saw Astro Toilets was in episode 60, and I'm sure that they should appear soon, perhaps even in the second part of episode 68. And if I'm right, I'll be shocked. Also, write what you think about it. Then we see a cameraman, which makes it clear to us that the scientist will now be punished. And this is where the episode ends. And now we will move on to the most important issues that interest you. And we will start with the laboratory, what's hidden there. And here is a cool theory for you personally from me. I think that in this laboratory, there is the main trump card of the mutants, and so that you understand that this is all very serious, since even the scientist himself came to defend his laboratory, and we have never seen a scientist enter into battle. But now this is a game of life and death, and that means that there is something there that will turn the whole war around. And I think that the main part of this laboratory is underground, just like it was in the film Resident Evil, where the Umbrella Company was also deep underground. And I think that the scientist created a very strong mutant, or even a titan, who can defeat even the new titan TV man. Or it is very likely that there is an original Gmail toilet there, which has improved greatly or even become a titan. And that's why the scientist is smiling so much, since it is possible that that new mutant will appear in the second part of episode 67. And the titans will fight with him. And this sounds very plausible. Also, write what you think about it. But we still have a few interesting questions. For example, how were the Titans able to survive after episode 65? I'll tell you now how it all happened. And whether to believe me or not is your decision. After the big explosion in episode 65, Skibbity scientists returned to finish off the Titans. But the Titans could still fight him, and it was they who left him this scar. Cameraman also transmitted a signal about serious damage to the cameraman laboratory. 
and cameramen engineers flew there and minimally repaired the Titans so that they could somehow continue to fight, since they were also informed that the Alliance is now waging a war on the base of mutants. And the last step remained to destroy all the mutants, and the Titans flew to the battlefield as quickly as possible. But what about the Titan TV man? I think that we will see him at the end of the second part of episode 67. Even if the scientist fights the Titans, I don't think that he will defeat them. And I am sure that we will see a new strong mutant who, together with scientists, will defeat the Titans or even kill one of them. And at the end of the second part of episode 67, Titan TV man will appear to save those who survived, and the mutants will run away again, and there will be no final battle. But friends, these are just theories. Don't perceive them as reality, but we sometimes predict events in new episodes. Perhaps something from what I said will come true. Anyway, but what about the Defuk boom? What was he doing here? It seems to me that in this episode, he wants to show us something. At first, he appeared in a very visible place, and then in a more secretive one. And it seems to me that he really wants the agents to enter the strange laboratory, because there is something terrible there. But for now, I can't say more. Since I've already said a lot of crazy theories, this is already some kind of fairy tale. But if you are interested in listening to my nonsense, then write in the comments. Thank you, and the number 75. I'm wondering how many loyal fans I have who watch my videos to the end. If no one watches, then there is no point in making such long videos. Anyway, it seems to me that today we learned a lot of useful information. I also answered many questions. And this is where our analysis ends. Subscribe to my channel and also subscribe to my spare channel as very cool videos will be released there. Also, subscribe to Telegram. Since then, I have communicated with subscribers and they are the first to receive exclusive information from me. Links to Telegram and a spare channel will be in the description under this video. And you are on the channel and see you.